Hi, I'm Jim Lighthizer, president of the Civil War Trust, and I'm also a native of this great state of Ohio, specifically Ashtabula, Ohio. Ohio was, at the time of the Civil War, the third largest population-wise state in the Union. And it provided 320,000 young men to the Union cause. Now that is 60% of all the military age men, age 18 to 45, available for service. That's the largest percentage of any state in the Union. So Ohio made a significant contribution. They also suffered 35,000 deaths over 10% of all the young men that went off to war in the various branches of the service. That's very, very significant. And probably what's just as important is the quality of people they produced. Think of people like U.S. Grant, Sherman, Sheridan, the Fighting McCooks. All of those were native sons of the state of Ohio. And even after the war, they, five different soldiers from that war, from Ohio, went on to become president of the United States. Benjamin Harrison, U.S. Grant, William McKinley, James Garfield, and of course Rutherford B. Hayes. Also, Edwin Stanton, Secretary of War, was a native of Ohio. And on the other side of the ledger, there was a group called the Copperheads. And they had a leader, also from Ohio, by the name of Clement Vallanigam. And he, of course, was a United States congressman who was very much anti-war and very much anti-Abraham Lincoln. While there were no major battles fought, in Ohio during the Civil War, there was some minor ones. One was Buffington Island, which was a consequence of John Hunt Morgan's raid into Southern Ohio. Also in the northern part of the state, Johnson Island up on Lake Erie, where some 15,000 Confederates were imprisoned. In almost every single major battlefield that where the war was fought, Ohio troops distinguished themselves in many ways, including here at Second Manassas. Ohio as I said, played a big role in the American Civil War.